Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the first Pasadena Women's Coalition Forum. My name is Jackie Robinson Baisley, Chair of National Women's Political Caucus, Greater Pasadena Area. Founded during the 1970s, our caucus is a local chapter of the national organization that recruits, trains, and supports women at all levels of appointed and elected government. We serve the cities of Pasadena, Altadena, Sierra Madre, La Cañada, and Glendale. We are proud to partner with the six women's organizations joining us tonight who all have a long history of public service, leadership, and advocacy in the city of Pasadena and our regional community. They will each briefly introduce themselves as part of moderating tonight's questions. The purpose of today's forum is designed to highlight the issues important to women in our city who comprise 52% plus of the population and the electorate. Thank you to both Mayor Tornick and Council Member Gordo for agreeing to participate tonight. I'd also like to thank Pasadena Now, Pasadena Media, the Arroyo Channel, Pasadena Independent, and ColoradoBoulevard.net for their assistance in publicizing and broadcasting the event. The format tonight will be as follows. Both candidates will open with a two minute opening statement that includes their view of the role of mayor in the city of Pasadena. We will then turn to questions presented by each organization with a two minute initial response, a one minute rebuttal and a one minute response if necessary. Each candidate will receive a two minute closing statement at the end. With that, I will turn it over to our first moderator. Thank you for joining us tonight. Good evening. My name is Charlotte Char Bland and I'm the state representative for the National Women's Political Caucus, Greater Pasadena. Go ahead, continue, Char. Okay, so the first question is for Council Member Gordo. Council Member Gordo. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We need to do the opening statement. So let's start with yeah. Council Member Gordo. Um, we'll begin with your two minute opening statement and please also include your view of the role of mayor in the city of Pasadena. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for this opportunity and all of you who organized this event. Um, and thank you everyone who voted in the primary. I was uh, proud to have finished in first. You know, passing is home to me. Uh, it's not an urban planning exercise. When I talk about our parks, it's because I played in them. When I talk about our schools, it's because I attended them. When I talk about neighborhoods, I grew up in those neighborhoods. When I talk about local businesses, it's because I waited on tables at those local businesses. The role of mayor is simple. It's to have his or her finger on the pulse of every part of this city and then work with uh, council members who are individually elected and staff to resolve and address those issues. Uh, I've got 30 years of community involvement. My record, in my record is clear. It's one of listening, building consensus, solving difficult problems uh, once we build that consensus. I do humbly say that I'm the most experienced candidate to be mayor of the city. I've worked on more budgets, including capital improvement budgets, work with more residents, more neighborhood leaders, resolve more complex issues, resolve more neighborhood issues, worked, on, worked with more department heads, city staff and other council members, fought for issues important to families, uh, help to guide the city through the recession and prepare for the recession. Collapse of the housing market, I was there to helping, helping the city. More public, I've dealt with more public safety issues than any of the candidates. Uh, accomplishments, I was proud to support the early childhood policy when others wouldn't. Uh, develop, early childhood development policy. I was, I'm, I'm proud to have improved neighborhoods, parks, uh, opened up school sites for, for after school hours, uh, built the most uh, affordable housing in my district at this entire time. Uh, and on COVID, I was here. I was here for all Pasadena's. You all saw me working hard, a uh, hands-on approach. Uh, and that's the role of the mayors, hands-on, having his or her finger on the pulse of every part of this city. Issues going forward, I plan to work hard supporting our residents, families, uh, and ensuring that every, there's a fair opportunity for all. Managing as we wind our way through COVID and the economic impacts of COVID. And of course, finding that balance between uh, appropriate development and affordable housing. As a product of the public schools, I can assure you, and my wife is also a public school teacher, and I can assure you there will not be a stronger advocate for our children, for our families. Uh, your time is up, council member. Thank you for your consideration. Mayor Tornick. 
thank you. Thank you for having me. And I, am I unmuted here? You're good thank to you. go. Okay. <laughs> thank you for having me. Um, look, getting together in, in this format is a challenge for everybody. Um, it highlights the fact that in spite of the fact that our worlds have been turned upside down, uh, all of us are obligated to try to carry on and, and, and keep doing the job that we're supposed to be doing. You're doing that in terms of bringing information to your viewers. I appreciate all of them taking time out. They're probably going to watch two debates tonight. Uh, and so I admire their, uh, their devotion. Uh, from my point of view, I think that the city, too, has been challenged to continue to provide the services that it must do. And I think Pasadena has done a good job at that. Uh, the role of the mayor, both in, in whether it's a pandemic environment or a normal situation, a more normal situation, is to uh, set the agenda, listen to the public, orchestrate the work of the staff, and then seek consensus to make things happen. It's not about the number of meetings you conduct. It's not about the conversations that you have. It's about getting the work done. I think my record demonstrates that the pledges I made when I ran five years ago to make Pasadena financially strong, to support the school district, to safeguard the environment, to protect the quality of life in our neighborhoods and reduce crime. I think I've delivered on those promises, not just conversation for me. And in the discussion tonight, I'm sure we'll be highlighting what I've done in terms of moving the agenda for women ahead. I'm happy to stand on my record there too in terms of my appointments, my support for the centennial celebration that Margaret McAustin headed. And I look forward to having the opportunity with your help to continue my work for the people of Pasadena. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor Tornick. We'll continue with our first presenter, Char Glenn. Good evening, Council Member Gordo. The last census estimates that women comprise 52% of the Pasadena population, yet there has only been seven women elected to the City Council in over 100 years of existence. The most recent NWPC endorsed Felicia Williams. There will be a vacancy if you, Mr. Gordo, prevail in this race. Understanding that it is the decision of the entire council to appoint the District 5 council member or call an election, have you given thought to qualified women that you have considered to appoint or run for election for District 5 council seat? So thank you for the question. First off, um, you know, I'm proud to have Felicia Williams support um, as and, and uh, I'm, I'm very proud to have her support. Um, let, let, let me say this, I, you know, I don't want to get too far ahead, you know, there's still an election to be had and, and people have to vote. Um, and it will be a decision of the city council, you know, women uh, uh, are underrepresented on the city council and we all know that. Uh, the short answer is there are some very qualified uh, women in my district uh, who could make a very solid argument uh, as to why they deserve an opportunity to represent the, the, the uh, people of District 5. Uh, and we should remain open to uh, each and every one of those women as I am. Um, you know, and as well, while we're on the subject, it's important not only for, for representation of residents, but let's keep in mind that uh, the workforce, uh, not just in the city, but outside of the city, as we wind our way through COVID, it will be important to address issues of childcare. Uh, within City Hall and outside of City Hall. It will be important to support uh, working uh, women who are trying to raise a family, uh, who are trying to uh, report to work and contribute to their family in, in, in ways that uh, my wife does, uh, many of you do. Uh, and so having the voice of a woman who is experiencing that firsthand uh, is going to be very important. Uh, and I think it can be done. I think it can be done. And so. Yes, uh, we should uh, give high consideration uh, to women, particularly women who are experiencing, uh, as many women are, uh, having to um, uh, address family issues as they go back to work and balancing those two things. Okay, Mayor Tornick, in addition to that question, please explain your individual preference for action and describe your individual efforts to support, encourage, 
and appoint women to leadership positions on commissions and elsewhere in the city and organizations you are affiliated with. I have made a concerted effort with regard to my appointments uh, to find qualified women. I recognize that women are underrepresented uh, on the city council. Um, there's not a lot I can do about that. Uh, but with regard to commissions, I'm proud to point to my record. Um, more than 40% of the people I've appointed to commissions have been women. And not just uh, all commissions, but some of the sort of the, the most sought after commission uh, locations, including uh, the PCOC, this, the Pasadena Center Operating Company, the RBOC, the Rose Bowl Operating Company, and the Planning Commission. Uh, so I have been very mindful of supporting um, the role and, and trying to find and encourage women to uh, apply for those commission positions. And when I vet them and, and meet them, uh, appoint them. And I, I'm proud of that. Frankly, the percentage would be higher, but many of my appointments are reappointments of people who have already been serving, who are doing a good job. And so that it's really not an available seat. Um, and so I, I think that that is, is very important. And the other thing that we've done this year is unique. And frankly, I was very supportive of Councilmember McAustin and her committee in celebrating the adoption of the 19th Amendment. Uh, that's, that's what this shiny pin is about. Uh, it was really a marvelous effort, and, and we insisted that every aspect of city government reflect it, including every piece of correspondence that went out in the city of Pasadena this year had this little, this little logo of Pasadena's Women Vote 100. These are symbolic things, but they're important things in showing that the city is mindful about advancing the cause of women and, and making sure that they have equal rights. Thank you, Mayor Tornick and Council Member Gordo. I mean, go ahead. Let me just address it. You know, it, it, it absolutely is important to, to make those appointments, and, and I believe uh, we all do that. Um, and but but let me say this. You know, I the president of my board for the last twenty years, uh, the board that I work for in, in my in the private sector, has always been a woman, and, and I'm very proud of the fact that uh, uh, that uh, um, uh, two presidents, three presidents that I've worked for of the board uh, have been women who uh, provided me with guidance. Uh, I was proud when uh, Maria Elena Durazo, who uh, stood up and said, I wanna be the head of the LA County Federation of Labor. And I helped her uh, get there because I, I, I thought it was important that uh, women uh, who work so hard as Maria Elena did uh, have an opportunity uh, to lead not just uh, one labor organization, but all of labor or organizations. And so I helped her and I'm proud that today she's a state senator. Uh, and so it's not only in our political role that we need to be supportive, uh, but in, in our private sector roles as well. And I believe I've done that. Thank you. Thank you. Our next moderator. That would be the Junior League, please. This is Patrice Marshall McKenzie on behalf of Junior League of Pasadena. The question for Mr. Tornick starting is, what is the single biggest issue facing the city of Pasadena due to COVID-19 pandemic and how do you plan to resolve it? Please explain. I think that the, uh, the biggest single issue are the financial implications uh, for the city, both in terms of the city budget itself. We've had a, a $30 million hole blown in the budget in terms of reduced revenues and, and increased costs that hadn't been anticipated. And, um, and also the private sector issues, the small businesses that are so challenged that many of them may not be able to reopen. And so the city is going to be confronted with very serious financial issues um, and all the services that we provide, all the things that we try to do, both normal services and special services, COVID related, uh, really flow from our ability to pay for them. And I think that that really is in my wheelhouse. I mean, that's what I've worked hardest at as mayor. When you talk about the role of the mayor, I, I have subscribed to the notion as outlined in the city charter, 
that the mayor's first and foremost responsibility is to have the first shot at the city budget. And so every, um, every time I've given a state of the city address, I focused on the city's finances. And I focused on the fact that when I came in, there were some structural deficit problems and we needed to fix that if we were gonna be able to effectively perform for our residents. That's even more true now. And so that I think that my record of performance as chair of the finance committee, uh, since I was a city council member and remained as that as mayor uh, and my reliance and, and, and uh, offering the suggestion of, of proposition uh, I and J uh, has really given us the financial wherewithal to be able to withstand this, the terrible challenges confronted uh, that we're confronted with by COVID. May I, may I respond or? So, Please do. So the, the you know, the, the, the COVID crisis um, has presented both a health emergency as well as um, an economic emergency. And we knew that going in. Uh, that's why I demanded that City Hall get back to work. This $30 million hole in the, in the budget, when I said, let's get the finance committee back to work uh, as COVID was unraveling, um, it fell on deaf ears. Uh, but this is why it meant something to say, let's meet, let's talk about it, let's, how do we prepare for this uh, and not wait for the actual economic crisis to arrive. Uh, and I'm, I'm a member of that finance committee, uh, but you all recall that I, I had to put together an op-ed piece and say, we need to get back to work representing, um, listening to and uh, representing the best interests of the residents of this city. Um, and that's what it took. Uh, the COVID crisis is very complex. It doesn't just involve a budget it doesn't, it, it involves uh, restaurants, business, small businesses. When people said, why did you jump in so quickly um, and start addressing the issues of restaurants? That's because my father worked at a restaurant for 50 years at the same restaurant. And I was raised on the, on the salary of a restaurant worker. Uh, I myself waited tables. And I knew that each closed door at each one of those small businesses, including restaurants, uh, meant one family who was already barely making it, who wasn't going to be able to through COVID. There were families in those businesses. Um, and so, the, you know, yes, we have to address the budget. I, and I've, I've been a member of the Finance Committee for longer than I can remember, uh, at least, uh, probably at least uh, 12, 14 years. Uh, I was appointed by Mayor Bogart and, uh, and asked to stay on the Finance Committee uh, by Mayor Tornick. Uh, and so I'm very familiar with the budget. But let's also think about small businesses. Let's think about uh, the families who work in those small businesses. Let's think about the employees who, who are at being who want to report back to work and their health and their ability to pay the to pay the bills uh, on the limited hours that they're receiving at the moment. That's the most important issue. It's complex. Thank you. League of Women Voters. Uh, good evening. I'm Pat Coulter representing the League of Women Voters. And uh, this question is for both candidates. And I believe we're starting with um, Councilman Gardo this uh, round. So as you know, and has I think it has been said that the 2020 marks the 100th anniversary of the passing of the 19th Amendment, giving women the right to vote. And it also marks the 100th birthday of the League of Women Voters. So I have to throw that in. Mm -hmm. However, the ERA has yet to be fully ratified. Why do you believe the time for the Equal Rights Amendment is now? And if you believe that equal means equal, what will you do differently in Pasadena to demonstrate your support of women and thus your support of the 28th Amendment? And I guess the first answer will come from Councilman Gardo and then uh, Mayor Tornick. Thank you. So, you know, the, the, the time for the Equal Rights uh, uh, Amendment to be fully realized uh, is, is uh, is is behind us. This should have been realized some time ago, um, and you know I, I'm uh, I'm I'm as mayor prepared to work hard to not just uh, uh, realize the 
uh, equal the, the intent of the Equal Rights Amendment, but to ensure that future generations continue to enjoy uh, the, what was intended in the Equal Rights Amendment. You know, and, and, we, and it starts right at home. Um, it starts at City Hall. Um, and it starts here in Pasadena. Uh, when you look at the workforce in the city of Pasadena, um, you know, uh, it wasn't until uh, a couple of years ago that actually 2018, that we started shifting and turning the wheel uh, for new hires. Uh, in 2018, new hires in the city of Pasadena represented 49.5% uh, uh, women. Uh, and 50.5% uh, male. And so we, we're starting to balance uh, the workforce, uh, but there's lots to be done. The executive team uh, at the moment, at least a year ago, no, actually this year, 2019, was only 25% female. Um, and we need to change that. Uh, the management group in the city of Pasadena uh, is a little bit higher. Well, it is higher, it's at 46.5. Distinguishing your mind between the executives, you know, city manager, department heads, uh, and the management group. And so we need to ensure that some of these women uh, who are in uh, the management group, the 46.5, uh, make their way into uh, executive management um, because uh, we need more representation there. Um, you know, in the, in the private sector, um, we do see more of a reflection in, in the services, more reflection of, of the workforce and women um, in, this, in, in law, in medicine, uh, but we need to see more of that uh, across the board in the public sector as well. Thank you. Uh, thank you. That, that question is really uh, multifaceted, I think. Um, it's true that the, uh, the Equal Rights Amendment celebrated its 100th uh, anniversary um, of its adoption. Um, and by the way, a happy birthday to the League of Women Voters. But, uh, but beyond that, um, for women of color, uh, it took a lot longer to, uh, to begin to realize the benefits that were afforded to, um, uh, to the people, uh, you know, to women in, in, in a general context. And I think that's still true. And, I, and one of the efforts that we make in Pasadena, and we have a very, um, I think, aggressive policy of trying to recognize uh, the hiring of, um, of both in terms of gender equity and in terms of racial equity and making sure that as, um, uh, as was referenced earlier, not just in terms of the overall uh, cohort, not just the total population of each category, but the stratification, you know, the vertical achievement in each category. And I think we're making real progress in that regard. I was a, uh, a department head in Pasadena uh, when I first came to town in 1982. And it was a very different uh, kind of an organization than it is today. And I think we benefited from it. And our city attorney and the head of the Human Resources and Recreation Department, the head of the human, well, I, I don't wanna go through them one at a time, but, but the, these are some of the most competent people we have in the city. And I think we have an aggressive effort uh, to do that. I, I believe that uh, that the work really does need to start at home. Uh, I have always been a supporter of the, of the ERA. Um, I think what happens in November will have a, a lot to say. I don't mean locally, but nationally, we'll have a lot to determine in terms of, of what happens there. But I, I'm certainly supportive uh, and think that it, it should have been passed a long time ago. Thank you both. Delta Sigma Theta Pasadena alumni chapter. Sora Tillman, you're, you're muted. Okay. Hello, everybody. I'm Juanita West Tillman, and I'm representing Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Pasadena Alumni Chapter. And my question addresses housing affordability and home ownership in particular. Those two um, items are at the are top issues of concern in Pasadena as in the United States in general. What Pasadena natives who are still fortunate enough to call Pasadena their home and continue to serve, as they consider home ownership, they simply cannot afford to be homeowners in the city of Pasadena. 
What plans or programs will you put in place to make home ownership more obtainable for middle class families? And I believe Mayor Turner was first and then Council Member Gordo. Well, Pasadena has a, um, a pretty sophisticated uh, program in terms of trying to provide affordable housing, uh, both in terms of rental and in terms of home ownership. In fact, Pasadena is one of the few cities that has had a program that actively encouraged um, the provision of affordable housing for uh, ownership purposes, not just rental housing. We have an inclusionary housing ordinance, which uh, means that 20% of all the new units built in the city uh, have to be affordable. Uh, but that's typically rental. There are some condos involved in that as well, but it's typically rental. But in terms of the um, uh, home ownership programs, we've just opened a brand new project that you've seen uh, where the Decker House was relocated on North Fair Oaks, a beautiful project done by Heritage Housing, uh, which is a home ownership project, um, almost unique in California to provide home ownership opportunities for people to buy a home for, I think, less than $400,000. Uh, but we all recognize that it's it's really a, a drop in the bucket, and you're absolutely right, Ms. Tillman. In terms of of uh, there, I see every day people come to me and say, "My family has lived in Pasadena for three generations, and we can't afford to live here anymore. I'm being priced out." It's a big problem, and one of the disconnects that we that we have here is that as people continue to oppose the construction of new housing, um, they don't seem to connect the dot and recognize that unless we we can build some new housing, it's going to be even more challenging to create affordable housing opportunities. They're sort of mutually exclusive. Um, so I think that that we have a long way to travel. We have a housing department that's worked hard on this. I have been a champion of, of affordable housing my whole adult life, both as a as planning director, as a city council member, as mayor, uh, and as a volunteer in neighborhood housing services. Uh, for almost 20 years, um, and then with Link Housing, which is a statewide nonprofit organization. So I am, on a personal level, uh, absolutely committed sorry, to- your time is up. Okay, didn't see a sign, sorry. Of affordable housing. You know, my, my, my record of on affordable housing uh, uh, speaks for itself. Um, you know, I would challenge Mayor Tornick to tell us when he was a council member, how many units were built in his district of affordable housing? I can tell you in my district, we took out liquor stores, uh, burned out apartment buildings. Uh, and we, you know, the, the liquor store at Washington and El Molino, the one at Summit and Orange Grove. Uh, and those were all for sale uh, uh, units. Uh, and I can go on. Um, I think all of you uh, uh, know my record on affordable housing. Um, and it's not about opposing new development. Uh, I, I opposed the villa and Robles development development because it was 100% uh, mar mm -mm. market, no affordable housing. Uh, Mayor Tony uh, defended uh, that proposal. I thought it was unacceptable. Um, and so, you know, the inclusionary housing ordinance uh, that was passed in 2006. Uh, three years before uh, Mayor Tornick joined the city council, and I was there with my colleagues uh, pressing for that inclusionary housing ordinance when Pasadena was leading the region to do that uh, and, and, and showing it by example. Um, and, you know, uh, in, in terms of uh, how this affects women, let's think about that. So the labor force is uh, in, in Pasadena um, is uh, about 60%, I believe, uh, women. Um, and you know th th there are 30, there are nearly 60,000 housing units. Think about that in Pasadena, and about 30 percent are occupied by household he households headed by women. Um, and so when you think about that, uh, we're really talking about uh, trying to create more of those uh, affordable housing opportunities. Uh, and I believe that I've done that. I pressed for that early on in the inclusionary housing ordinance. Uh, and then I, I worked to clean up our neighborhoods and uh, Jackie Robinson, you were there when we were pushing to clean up neighborhoods, uh, replace them with a beautiful affordable housing. Uh, and my record, um, I believe speaks for itself. Um, I, and I do believe on the issue of affordable housing, uh, I've got the most experience on for sale uh, and for rent affordable housing. Sorry, uh, your time is up. Mayor Twinick will receive a one minute rebuttal. 
Yeah, I think in terms of the record uh, housing, I would match my record with anyone. Um, the fact that there are more affordable housing units in Council Member Gordo's district than, uh, than in my district is purely a function of what the market response is. The city, as you understand, doesn't build the housing. The city accommodates developers and what they're doing. Uh, I have, I can look out my window and see an affordable housing project that's around my around the corner on California Boulevard, uh, which is a project that was paid for with the kinds of in lieu fees that Council Member Gordo seems not to think is a good idea any longer. Uh, sometimes it makes an, there's an opportunity to build housing offsite that allows us to do some things, especially with with for sale housing, which is what the affordable project is around the corner for me on California. Uh, that aren't available if, if all the units get built on site. So this is a complicated issue. I think it's unfair to sort of cherry pick and, and sort of mislead a little bit in terms of what the impacts are of what we do on some of these projects. If I may rebut, you know, the, 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 the city may not directly built it, but, you know, in, in the examples that I've given you, um, and uh, Jackie Robinson recalls it, um, I went out and talked to uh, Joel Bryant. I talked to Pasadena Heritage um, uh, and said, you know, help us acquire these properties, uh, these liquor stores, uh, and then let's have the city uh, assist in constructing affordable housing for families. Uh, Joel Bryant, uh, who lives not too far from my neighborhood, and many of you know, helped accomplish that at El Molino in Washington. Um, then, uh, uh, Heritage Housing Partners, uh, when I went back to Joel on the second project, he said, Joel, you got to help me at Summit and Orange Grove. Uh, we need to clean that neighborhood up and, and this is an opportunity. That property is for sale, Joel. Um, and uh, he said, I'm not, you know, I'm not in a position to do it. So I went to someone else uh, and uh, talked to Charles Lovin and we got it done. So, you know, it takes personal interest. It takes listening to neighbors uh, and a lot of effort to get projects like that done. Um, and that's what I'm talking about. Alpha Kappa Alpha, Eta Lambda Omega Alumni Chapter. Hi, I'm Patrice Marshall McKenzie, representing Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, Eta Lambda Omega Chapter in Pasadena. Economic development and wealth building is a key priority for the sorority, which is driving this question. COVID-19 has had an adverse impact on the small business landscape here in Pasadena, and even entities like Ro Romans um, have not been exempt from those vulnerable economic conditions. However, the financial impact of this pandemic has been exponentially more catastrophic for Black women business owners. A 2019 report entitled American Express State of Women-Owned Businesses cites Black women represent 42% of all net new women-owned businesses. While Black women over-index in business ownership, they are woefully underrepresented in access to PPP loans or other financial tools. Many are operating in sectors that were hardest hit by lockdown orders, such as personal care, retail, or restaurants. What will you do as mayor to undergird and support greater access to capital and contract opportunities for Black women and minority business owners in Pasadena? I believe Councilmember Gordo is the next to start to answer this question. This will be for both candidates. You know, um, when, when, when COVID struck Pasadena, uh, and I was demanding that uh, that the uh, at all committees meet, that the council meet. Um, it was a good to do that to mitigate uh, what we knew would be a very real impact uh, to small business owners, all small business owners, but particularly uh, minority business owners. Um, be, why? Because they don't always have the access to the to the loan programs. They don't always have the information. They tend to be smaller business owners. Uh, they don't always have the information that they need to access the assistance that's out there. Uh, and again, that was rejected. Uh, the, the, the quote that I recall uh, Mayor Tornick saying when I said, don't cancel meetings. Uh, this is when the people of Pasadena need us most. The quote that I recall sticks in my mind the most is, what difference would it make? Um, something along those lines. Um, and, you know, that now we see what difference it makes. Uh, now we see not just the, the health outcomes, although they're, you know, thank goodness they're, they're getting better. But now we see the impact to, to small minority owned businesses, to small businesses, and why we needed to get going on putting in um, uh, uh, 
guidelines uh, for small businesses to try and operate safely uh, to begin that discussion so we could provide, provide guidance. Uh, and I do think there's an opportunity uh, to still to, to do that uh, and work with, uh, with our small business, particularly uh, minority owned businesses uh, who don't always have the information uh, to access, and, you know, I'm, I'm very proud to have the support of Vice Mayor Hampton. Uh, Vice Mayor Hampton has pressed this issue over and over uh, and uh, to get in partnership with Vice Mayor Hampton and all of my colleagues on the city council, um, we're gonna bring a new emphasis uh, to pre precisely that issue, to opening doors to small businesses uh, who don't always have the information, don't always have the access uh, to attain uh, uh, contracts, not just in Pasadena, but with the county, with the state uh, and elsewhere. I think that there's some confusion and I, I haven't wanted to spend any time on this, but I think I need to set the record straight here. Um, there's some confusion in terms of not having council committee meetings and not having uh, additional council meetings and not working to deliver service to the people who need it the most. I think that, that there's some confusion about the fact that somehow if the city council is sitting around occupying staff, uh, asking a series of questions, coming up with a series of data requests, that that's what gets the help to the people that most need it. I quite agree that we had an emergency condition here. And what we were asking the staff to do, the people who actually do the work, and maybe I'm, I'm have a different perspective because I was a department head and I know how work gets done in the city. The role of the city council is to set policy. The role of the staff, and this goes back to the role of the mayor that Jackie asked about at the beginning of the meeting. The role of the staff is to do the work and to deliver the service to the people of Pasadena. That's why we pay 2,200 people in this, uh, of the best people we can find to deliver service to our residents. The time that they're spending meeting with council members and trading ideas and talking things over, trying to set up meetings remotely before we had electronic ability to do that, that's time not spent interacting with the federal government, uh, trying to understand how we could get PPP applications out on the part of small businesses who needed them, trying to understand the guidelines so we could get that information to people so they could apply. That's how the service gets delivered. The service doesn't get delivered by council meetings going on around the clock. So I, I have no apologies for suggesting that we had to have fewer council committee meetings and even fewer council meetings to allow the staff, some of whom were working 24 seven already to deliver service to our residents and kind of conflating the idea of fewer council meetings and subcommittee meetings, which, which might feel good to council members, doesn't necessarily get the work done or deliver service to the people who need it the most. If I may respond, um, you know, the, the, the staff, the staff, um, the staff has worked very hard, but but let's 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 not recreate history here. Uh, let's recall that uh, well, one, yeah, the council's job is one policy, but it's also oversight. It's prioritizing the work of the staff, not by one person, but by, by the entire city council. That's what we're elected to do, uh, to represent the interest of the residents uh, as as a body, um, and that wasn't happening, uh, and and it showed. Um, yes, the staff was off working. But recall, when I wrote that op-ed piece saying, let's get back to work, it's because I was offended that we weren't meeting and the staff was focused on bringing what to the Planning Commission? Two cannabis permits. Instead of focusing at the time uh, on putting in place guidelines for businesses who are already here, who are struggling, we were preparing cannabis permits at the Planning Commission uh, in the middle of COVID for two companies who aren't in Pasadena and including a Las Vegas corporation uh, to sell cannabis in Pasadena. That was the priority that I wanted to change. All right, Th that is a terrible misrepresentation of what was going on in the city at that point. The fact that, that Council Member Gordo is preoccupied with cannabis is well established. But I think that the, the reality of what the, plan what the planning department was doing was meeting with the transportation people, meeting with the restaurateurs, mapping out every piece of Colorado Boulevard in terms of what would be suitable for outdoor dining. The work that the staff was doing and was engaged in uh, was not focused on cannabis. On the contrary, it, they had been working with all of these businesses trying to figure out how to safely allow restaurants to have outdoor dining opportunities so that they could survive. 
So to suggest that the staff was pre preoccupied with accommodating a, a, you know, a cannabis supplier is a terrible misrepresentation of the work that the planning staff was doing and the planning commission as well. That was the first meeting that was scheduled. Excuse me. I, I just, now we got. Now we're changing the rules here, in, in terms of back. And okay. Forth. I think I think we've had the initial question and two rebuttals, in fact, from both of you. So thank you for your thorough responses to that question. We're going to move to the next question and moderator, uh, which I believe is Vital Voices. I'm sorry. That's Women in Leadership. Vital Voices. Yes. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, good afternoon, uh, Mayor and Councilman. My name is Beverly Morgan Sandoz, and I'm on the Executive Committee of Women in Leadership, Vital Voices. It's a group of diverse women founded uh, to educate women about the, uh, about the legal process and candidates. Um, as we have seen from this discussion, we know that pay and gender equity in employment are about a lot of issues, equal opportunity, economic and empowerment, systemic issues, uh, unconscious bias that keep people from achieving what they could. While the most recent human resources report that we were able to see shows that um, uh, that Pasadena's workforce was a reflective, was diverse and was reflective of the community. It did not explain why women were only 34% of the city's labor force and why only four of the 17 highest paid positions were occupied by women. So our questions are for each of you, we'd like a response. How many black women are on your campaign staff? And if elected or reelected, list the steps you would take to bring more women into the workforce at higher level positions. Uh, and I'm not sure which one goes first, but we, we would like a response from both. I believe, and I can be corrected, I believe we're on council member Gordo going first. Okay. So, so there are um, women of all uh, uh, colors, African-American women, Latino women, um, Caucasian women uh, working very hard to elect me. Um, you know, uh, I, I have a, a one staff person uh, mm -hmm. on my campaign um, and then consultants. Um, but I, I can assure you that, uh, in, in fact, uh, my advisory body uh, is, is uh, composed uh, mostly of women um, and uh, African-American women, uh, Black women are represented. Um, and again, um, and I, I will continue to, uh, to uh, count on, on the advice uh, of women because that's what's, that, that advice is in large part what got me to this point. Uh, 60, as I mentioned earlier, 60% uh, of, the, of the workforce citywide uh, is women, is my recollection. The median wage for women is about $54,000 per year uh, in that workforce broadly. For men, it's about $59,000 per year. Now, it's a little more complicated than that because um, it, it, then you have to break it out by sectors of the workforce, healthcare, uh, health support, personal services, offices, administrative. So it becomes much more complex um, in terms of uh, promoting uh, women. Uh, I talked earlier about uh, exactly uh, that issue that's raised by Vital Voices, the issue of uh, how many women in the city's workforce uh, are in the uh, management and supervisorial role versus uh, how many women are in the executive uh, role. Uh, and I do uh, believe that we need to do a better job, uh, particularly in the executive role. Mayor Tornay. In response to the, uh, the re-election campaign composition, my, my campaign is clearly dominated uh, by women, uh, both in a, in a management perspective and in a staffing perspective. 
Um, and I would say that in terms of the ground game, uh, that uh, a black woman is running that enterprise, uh, and then all of you know her. Um, so uh, the other thing that skews the uh, composition of my campaign is that my, my grandchildren are actively involved, and six of them are, are female. So it really uh, it creates a very different kind of a uh, numbers game in, in terms of the Tornick family. Uh, but in terms of the, um, the workforce, I think the critical thing that, that we have been doing is we have been focusing on the numbers. And some of it, frankly, the 34% number that you referenced, uh, part of that is skewed because some of the bigger departments, um, most uh, specifically the police department and the public works department, and um, in many of the classifications have been traditionally male dominated so that the, um, the, the straight percentage game is, is not one that, that I think is um, an effective way to gauge what's happening. A better indicator is the one you were talking about earlier is the stratification issue in terms of who we have in executive positions. And that's changing at a, at a very rapid rate uh, in Pasadena. Although you have to recognize that in a lot of these positions, there's not a lot of turnover. So it does take time to work its way through the, through the workforce. Um, one of the important things that we need to do and we have been doing and I've been doing on a personal level is meeting with younger people, um, meeting with uh, high school kids, uh, meeting in the classrooms, uh, encouraging them uh, in terms of their, their setting their sights and what they aspire to. And I think that's, the, that's where we're going to have the big success is in changing people's assumptions at a younger age and then creating uh, the circumstances where systemic discrimination can no longer happen. You know, I, I, I agree with that uh, sy systemic discrimination. You know, one of the points that uh, Mayor Tornix uh, and is one that that uh, women are very familiar with. Uh, one of the one of the points his campaign makes is that uh, I will not have the time because I'm a, a working father uh, to to uh, to serve as mayor. Uh, and I've served as, as, as a council member uh, much longer than uh, Mayor Tornick has uh, combined as a council member and mayor. 20 years and I've done it as you know raising a family and working hard and women are very familiar with that uh, with that argument it's a false argument um, and uh, you know I reject it uh, as women have for a long time um, the other the other point is you know I was proud that Cynthia Kurtz uh, was the city manager that uh, I helped to to uh, to uh, bring in and supported for many years uh, as the women as a woman city manager uh, then we had uh, at that time a woman city clerk, uh, Ms. Rodriguez, uh, and uh, we had the trifecta with the city attorney. Um, and I was very proud to work with each one of them, uh, support them in their work, uh, and I'm going to continue to do that. Uh, yes, as as I work in my own career as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this will be our final question and. Uh, before I ask the question, I just want to recognize Jocelyn Ferguson, who was uh, not able to join us at the very beginning of the program, but she is the president of Junior League Pasadena, and we thank them for their involvement in the um, forum as well. Jocelyn, would you like to uh, share a few words since you weren't on with us earlier? Um, Patrice represented well for you in asking the Junior League question. You oh, are you're muted. muted. You're muted. Thank you so much, Jackie. I appreciate it. And to our candidates, thank you for participating in this mayoral forum. This election this year is so critically important, uh, not only to us as individuals, but to our communities and to our city. So want to thank you for that. And um, just want to clarify, I am the advocacy chair and the diversity, equity, and inclusion chair for the Junior League of Pasadena, and then for the Junior Leagues of California State Public Affairs Committee. I'm also the vice chair, serving 17 leagues across California, representing over 8,500 women. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jocelyn. And now we have Pauline Field um, on behalf of 5050 Leadership. Yes, uh, <clears throat> good afternoon, Ahmed. Mayor Tornick and Councilmember Gordo. Uh, so 
as you have uh, both mentioned, uh, we have uh, a lot of women in the workforce. Um, we've uh, got, uh, you've been uh, making headway in, in having more women in upper management and executive positions, uh, but um, the, uh, the and the pay, as was mentioned, fifty four thousand for women and fifty nine thousand for men. Uh, I wonder also if you would be willing, um, whether you're um, continuing as mayor or will be uh, voted in as mayor, if uh, you will do an audit of whether uh, all employees in Pasadena, uh, the city of Pasadena, are in fact being paid equally, uh, men and women, for the same uh, level of job. And I believe we will start with Mayor Tornick for the response to this question. Thank you. Um, I think I referenced earlier the um, annual report we have with regard to the composition of our workforce um, that analyzes uh, by gender and by race and ethnicity uh, how we're doing and and both vertically and horizontally. Um, but there's also been the aspect of compensation that's been discussed. And I believe that we have uh, conducted, I, I don't know if we would call them formal audits, but we have conducted analyses in terms of compensation uh, to see if there is uh, equitable pay uh, at the same time. It's an insidious uh, kind of a problem, frankly, because the the um, a lot of the pay classifications that are dominated by women are lower pay classifications. And so um, there's, there are distortions and people dismiss it on that basis. But a little deeper dive demonstrates sometimes that even for even though the jobs are different, um, the equivalency isn't there and that people are being, you know, th that a, a, a clerk um, may be getting paid than a, a less than a, um, a, a laborer. Uh, and really in terms of the skill sets, et cetera, may, you know, may not be really equitable. I believe we have conducted some of those analyses. I would certainly commit to taking a closer look at that. Uh, I remember the last time we talked about that, it, it seemed like uh, there weren't any sort of dramatic disparities, but I think that is, it's a point well made. I, I take it seriously, and I think that's a good suggestion we should look at. It. Council Member Gordo. You know, it, it's, um, you know, I, I go back to, to the, uh, when we had the trifecta, uh, Jane Rodriguez, city clerk, Michelle Bonneries, uh, city attorney, and um, um, Cynthia Kurtz as our city manager. Um, and, you know, it, it, I, I've talked a little bit about uh, the disparity in pay in general, 54,000, the median age for, for, I'm sorry, the median income for women, uh, 59,000 for men. Um, and uh, the report that uh, Mayor Tornick is talking about, the last report was issued in January of 2019, um, is my recollection. Um, uh, I, be I believe we update that yearly as well. Um, but let me let me say uh, let, let me say this. You know, when when we start looking at when you look at the executive functions, both within City Hall as well as uh, outside of City Hall, in the community in general. At the executive functions, uh, women are not well represented. Uh, and, uh, and, but when, when they are there, the pay tends, particularly in the private sector, to be about the same. It's in the other classifications. It's in the other jobs uh, that where women dominate, um, you know, in healthcare, technical occupation, uh, healthcare support, personal services, and office and administrative support, where women then fall behind uh, in terms of equal pay. Um, you know, I, 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 again, that's this is what I do um, every day. Uh, you know, I fight for the rights of working families, for the rights of uh, working uh, women, uh, and uh, for the rights of, uh, of working people in general. And so I understand these issues very clearly. Um, and uh, I am committed to uh, ensuring that the city of Pasadena is a responsible and fair employer, uh, particularly when it comes uh, to women, uh, particularly when it comes to uh, to families, um, and uh, and 
if our reporting uh, isn't uh, as robust as it should be, I absolutely am committed to ensuring that it does become as clear uh, and robust as it should be. Sorry, your time is up. Thank you to both of you. Um, we're coming on the end of the forum and just very briefly before the two minute closing statements in which we will start with Councilman Gordo and end with uh, Mayor Tornick. I would like you each please to take 30 seconds uh, to uh, ask questions about our district and we definitely want to send our thanks to all of the teachers, staff, and the superintendent for all the right now with uh, distance learning and their own response to COVID-19. But if you could please answer the question of whether or not you support the school bond measure that will be on the ballot this November and simple yes or no will suffice. Um, and if you would like to explain, you have 30 seconds. Um, Mayor Tornick. Yes, I support the measure. Uh, I think it, it uh, is critical. The, the school district has been um, very challenged um, in recent years. They've closed some facilities, occupied and listened to those discussions. <laughs> And I'm working with them now to find ways to reuse it, uh, but their remaining buildings need attention. They have technology channel challenges that are that need to be met. So I do support the uh, the measure O. Thank you, Councilman Gordo. Yes, I, I, I too support it, but I am concerned uh, about the, the support that it's receiving uh, in the in the community and and how well people understand it. You know, when we were talking about closing down schools, I argued. You know, let's let's really. I'm sorry, closing down schools and selling out property. I argued. You know, let's not be the let's not be the uh, the generation of Pasadena's that are just viewed as giving up on public education because when we sell those buildings, um, they're gone forever. Uh, when they're when and, and they're gone from our education system. Uh, I, we need to be support. My wife is a school uh, teacher, and I watch her uh, struggle every day with the distance learning issue. Um, and sorry, your time is up. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mayor Tor um did I say um, Councilman Gordo? Councilman Gordo, uh, can you please give us your two minute closing statement followed by Mayor Tornick? Let me first thank everyone who voted in the primary and the citywide confidence and support you expressed in me. I'm running to represent all of the people of this city. Listen carefully as I always have uh, and bring us together to work towards sensible solutions. Um, I, I, I will be, and I will continue to study the issues as I always have, uh, but you know, that's not preparedness. Uh, preparedness is studying the issues as I always have and, and being willing to listen uh, as we make uh, decisions and not say to residents my way or the highway, uh, because Pasadena is not a planning, urban planning exercise. For me, I know better. Uh, then, uh, you know, I, I should say, I don't know better than everyone else. I value the wisdom of the people of Pasadena and will listen to it carefully as I always have. Um, let's value all of our kids, families, residents, uh, because all deserve the same opportunity that I had, uh, that Vice Mayor Hampton had, that, uh, that Felicia Williams had uh, to become a successful and contributing member of this community. Um, and I think we can do that, and that that will uh, determine uh, whether Pasadena continues to be a great city or not. And I'm and I'm 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 completely convinced that we must do that. Um, I'm I'm proud of the uh, citywide trust and support uh, that showed in the primary results. Um, we will we will work together as a city, uh, as neighbors, as friends, as colleagues, to improve every part of this city uh, for the benefit of all. I'm asking your support to be our next mayor uh, because I care deeply uh, and love uh, and believe in the people of this city uh, who have given me such great opportunity. Uh, and so I thank you for that. Uh, thank you for your consideration to be our next mayor. Uh, I will work very hard to earn the confidence uh, and uh, support that you've expressed to me. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Tornick. Thank you. Thank you to the sponsors. Thank you for your patience. Everybody's tuning out to watch the big debate. Uh, what I want to say is that uh, I have lived in Pasadena most of my adult life. My family moved here in 1982. Um, we moved from back east. I was born in Brooklyn, not in Pasadena. 
Um, but I have, my children have been raised here and, and this community has given me a great deal. Serving as the mayor has been a real privilege for me. My experience in Pasadena has been as a planning director, uh, as a volunteer, a community volunteer with Sandra Knox in, in Northwest Pasadena, as a uh, commissioner, but planning commissioner, design commissioner, as a city council member and as a mayor. I mean, my, I have devoted uh, most of my time in Pasadena to serving the city in one form or another. Uh, my experience outside of the city and having lived in other places and my experience as a professional city planner uh, have equipped me to understand what um, a city really is about. Um, the narrative that suggests that, it's, that uh, I don't listen to people, that I don't communicate with people is a false narrative. There's nobody that's been more accessible to people, to groups, supporting uh, nonprofit organizations than I have been during my term as mayor and a city council member prior to that. So that narrative is simply not accurate. One of the important differences is that I think that at a certain point after you've listened and you've studied the analysis uh, and you've really done your homework, you've got to get it done. And I have demonstrated, I think, the ability to get it done, not in an authoritarian way, and I think the unanimous votes on the city council on critical issues would document that. Serving as mayor of Pasadena has been the greatest privilege of my life. I hope you'll give me the opportunity to continue to serve you and uh, enjoy the presidential debate. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mary Tornick and council member Gordo. And thank you to all of you attending tonight and for our partners for joining us tonight. Good luck to both of you. Election day is Tuesday, November 3rd. We urge all of you to prepare to vote early by mailing or dropping off your ballots in advance. City Clerk Mark Jomsky has made available secure drop boxes throughout the city, including directly in front of City Hall, Washington Park, Victory Park, Hastings and Allendale Libraries, Jackie Robinson Center, Grant Park and the Rose Bowl. October 19th is the last day to register online or postmark your new voter registration. All, voter, all registered voters will receive a mailed ballot starting the week of August 5th. Vote centers will be open every day from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. during the early voting period that starts Saturday, October 24th, and all day on election day from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. To check your registration, locate a vote center or more information on these items, go to lavote.net. Thank you, have a good evening, and remind five people you know to register and go and vote. Thank you. Thank you.